The Church of Jesus Christ depends on the call of God to persons to a variety of ministry opportunities. I visited the God's Calling event in State College in January and was inspired by the testimonies of persons full of passion for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Persons anxious to discern exactly what God's yearning was for their lives. I've asked to talk to one such person today and I'm delighted to introduce to you Michelle Bodel. Michelle, thanks for coming all the way from Clearfield. You're welcome. Tell us the story of ministry in Russia, how you happened to go to Russia and what that experience was like. Um, our college, Houghton College, offers a trip each year to Russia through the college as well as um, world missions with the Wesleyan Church because that's the denomination affiliation of the school. And you go for two weeks into Russia and each year is a different experience. And the years that I went, the first year, all the ministries that we planned actually fell through two days before we left. <laughs> and we left thinking we were going to go to this orphanage and it didn't happen. But instead, God put this whole new plan and spin on the trip, and we end up being invited into a public school in order to put on a skit about America and um, in order to teach the kids English as well. And then it gave us an opportunity to form relationships with these kids. So that was a really neat experience. And then the entire point of going to Russia is to form relationships with the young adults there. So if you want young one year, they want you to go back a second year. So I went back the second year, and I got some amazing opportunities. Um, we got to talk on national television about the Protestant concept of Easter, which just usually isn't allowed at all. Um, and then I actually got to teach at a college-level class about cults in the New Age, which is actually a class that I was taking at the exact same time back at Houghton. So I got to share the knowledge of what I was learning with people around my age in Russia. Now, you don't speak Russian, do you? <laughs> no. So, so what was that like? Um, interesting to say the least. I actually ended up playing a game of Uno with some of the girls there, and they only knew their colors in English, and I only knew my colors in Russian. And so that was a really cool opportunity to just have this conversation, and like I get to call it a God moment, where God just intervened and formed relationships even when language was such a barrier. Mm -hmm. um, Let's talk a little bit now about Michelle. What do people need to know about Michelle Bodel? <laughs> I'm not even really sure. <laughs> <laughs> Tell um, me about school. Sure. Where you've been and what your intentions are because sure. you're not finished yet, are you? No. I actually started out my first year at the University of Pittsburgh as a double major in neuroscience and psychology with the intention to go into psychiatry. And about halfway through my first year of college, I decided to transfer. I didn't really know why, other than the fact that I didn't want to go into medicine anymore. So I ended up at a small Christian liberal arts school in New York called Houghton College. It's right between the border of Pennsylvania and New York. And I actually ended up being a double major there in religion and psychology. And I just graduated from there in December as that same double major, but also triple minor in Bible theology and Australian studies. What brought you to the ministry? A long, complicated process that I like to call a journey. Um, I came to the God's Call event the first year I was invited, and I had no idea why I was there. How my, long ago was that? Uh, that would have been three years ago. Okay. And my pastor was insisting that I was going through this transitional time in my life when I was switching colleges, and I really needed just some groundwork. And I was very angry when I left that event because everyone was talking about being called into ordained ministry, and I felt that I was being called into psychology still at that time. And so I had a lot of anger about that event, but I was convinced to come back and try it a second year round after being on the discussion panel about how to improve it. And the second year I went was a lot more focused on lay ministry, and I started to feel a call in my heart to being a lay pastor, which was a new position that had just opened up within our conference and within the United Methodist Church as a whole. And then as time progressed and it came time for me to pick out grad schools, I went to go to the Massachusetts School of Professional Psychology in Boston. And as I was in the room with all the dissertations, I came to the realization that I just didn't have the heart to go four more years for psychology. Mm -hmm. And I gave mm -hmm. in and realized that all this time that I thought I was being called in the lay ministry, I was actually being called into ordained ministry. And your feelings about that were what? 
anxious, but also anticipation at the same time. Anxious because um, I actually knew exactly why I had been avoiding that call in my life all those years. And it's because I'd seen my dad as just a lay minister in the church being so burnt out. And I didn't want to put myself in that position. I wanted to be able to raise a family without having to be at meetings all the time. Um, but also anxious, and, but um, also excited because here I am and I'm finally giving in to what God wants me to do. And that's just such a great moment in your life. Tell me about your church. Your church is pretty important in your life mm -hmm. and, in fact, has been very supportive of you. Mm -hmm. Let's be specific about that, okay? Sure. Um, I've actually attended two churches. I went through a period in my life when I left my home church, my home church I had grown up in that had been my family for all these years because I just felt like I wasn't being nurtured in the right way at that time. And I started to attend a second church, in, uh, a Wesleyan church, which is how I ended up at my school. And through that, I became very passionate about social justice. And then I did a link program between the Wesleyan Church and the Methodist Church focusing on reconciliation and understanding between youth. And then it came a time when I realized, okay, it's time to go back to my home church and really show this passion for social justice that I've acquired. And from that point on, my home church has just been so supportive. Every opportunity I've, I've been given through the church to be an intern, to work both this past summer and currently for them, has just been amazing. And they've been very permission-giving. Mm -hmm. Whatever crazy ministry ideas I come up with, they somehow seem to work them out and give me the support both through prayer but also through people and finances as well. When we come back, let's talk about Australia. Sure. And then let's talk a little bit about this thing called call. Someone who's watching you and I talk today and listening to us is wondering just how you respond to that and how you identify a call. So we'll, we'll talk about that when we come back.